Jason, today's episode of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast is brought to the good people by Budget Blinds. Budget Blinds! Hey, our good friends at Budget Blinds, they want to say thank you to a special group of people. They want to say thank you to those frontline workers during this crisis. And here's the thing. You can help say thank you too. Head on over to the Budget Blinds of Lee Summit Facebook page. Nominate your frontline worker for a chance to win for them, for that worker to win $200 in Hy-Vee gift cards in partnership with us at Link to Lee Summit and $1,000 worth of window coverings from Budget Blinds, amazing vendor, enlightened style, and there's more, a $50 gift card to Ember's Candle Bar. So you got to let us know who deserves this prize, and they're going to have the drawing on May 1st. Head on over to our Robot Shade Overlords Facebook page. That's the Budget Blinds Facebook page. Comment on the post that's there with your nomination. Make sure you share that post. Get the word out. All the nominations will be taken in at 10 a.m. on the 1st. And they need to live within the budget blinds of Lee Summit and Overland Park territory to be eligible for this fantastic award. And let's be clear, this is yet another example of how our excellent friends at Budget Blinds are are being, even in this, and let's be honest, this awful mess of a time, they're still being those good eggs and taking care of the community. Amazing community partners. And even though, you know, you can't go see them. You can see him virtually. You can see him on the Facebooks. Go see him. Tell him Jason next thing. Our show is also brought to the good people, Jason, by a quick reminder. Keep shopping local. You can do that with curbside pickup. You can do that with online ordering. You can do it with delivery. And you can buy do it by cards. buying some gift cards. Absolutely. Take care of our community partners. Look, they're going to be here. Um, we're all going to get through this in one fashion or another. We want as many of our local businesses to survive and thrive as possible. So you can do your part by making time and taking and going and supporting one of those local businesses. Hello and welcome to this Friday episode of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast. I have some very special guests with me today. Amy Johnson and Jamie Lyon. You guys have both been guests before, but now you are back together and we're going to have Hello. some fun. Welcome, guys. Thank you. So Hello. glad to be here. You are my positive friends. That's what I like to call you. You, uh, you, guys, like you guys are always nice, always positive. And um, to quote Amy, you're a whole lot of rainbows and unicorns. And I, even the cynic in me, I love it. <laughs> to quote Amy. <laughs> Actually, we, I think. We do love rainbows and unicorns. You're right. <laughs> I think my quote was, we're not just rainbows and unicorns, though. I know. And that is the quote oh, okay. that made me believe everything uh, that that you say because I was skeptical, Amy, of of your your approach to to people and to life. Uh, that you were always looking for for noticing kindness and goodness about people, and and that set alarms in this old man's head. Um, but but it is a nice perspective, and I, I I have loved over the last few years getting to know you guys and your your approach to to people and and to community. I wanted you guys to come on. I've been bugging you actually for a while to come back on the show as a pair because I want to talk a little bit about the the partnership and the business that the two of you have put together. It's called I Am Noticed. You work with school districts around the area. I'm going to say it's regional-ish. Um, but it's about, it's about social awareness. It's about mental well-being. And it's about it's about positivity and and kindness to to yourself and to others. So I want to just I, I want to put that there, and then I want to go backward a little bit because the two of you, while you have been friends for a while, you do separate things, and it evolved into this this, this partnership. So so if we can just go backward a little bit, Amy, and talk a little bit about your the Notice Network and what that is, and then Jamie will talk a little about your individual business called Enjoy. Um, just to set a base of where, where this started. Amy, what is the Notice Network? I still have trouble explaining what it is, and I've known you for a while. Yeah. Well, I think the reason that it sometimes takes a while to get your head around is because nothing existed like it before, and nothing really exists like it yet. So it, it's not really a cookie cutter kind of thing. The Notice Network is simply 
a network of people that are connected because they want to help themselves and others notice the goodness in people around them. So over the years, it started with just a really simple thought, like what would happen if I first thought it was women, I was very wrong about that, it's all people, but um, what would happen if they got noticed just for being themselves? If they, if somebody said, I see you, I hear you, you matter to me, and there were no strings attached. It wasn't like, and can you do these things for me? It was just simply, I just want you to know you're noticed. And to date, about 30,000 people, a little over 30,000 people around the world have been noticed. Um, and I, I can mark that. I don't, I think it's probably a silly number. What I mean by that 30,000 is that we have little products that say noticed and there's about 30,000 of those in circulation. It doesn't require a product to notice somebody, but we do believe that it anchors it. So that is- I love that it's that simple though. The, the, that that, simple. the notice network is just about that one word. Yep. I notice you and yep. I notice something good about you. I, that, sometimes the simple things are the most beautiful, right? I love that. I think, I think that's why it's sometimes hard to articulate what it is though, because it feels like you should say more or there should be more to it. Um, as it's evolved since 2011, I have um, evolved the message that goes with it. And as a professional speaker and trainer, I'm able to kind of dive into what happens when people get noticed and when we can notice the goodness in ourselves and how that authentically allows us to notice it in others. And truly the science, the art, and the impact of that. So I was doing all that. Um, I started doing that casually in 2011 and the business evolved and grew. And then in 2015, a mutual friend of Jamie and I said, uh, you guys should meet, you guys are the same. And so uh, we met at Whistle Stop right here in Lee Summit. And we joke that we haven't been, we haven't stopped talking since. We just talk and come up with good ideas. The whistle stop should really do a uh, a study sometime on the the number of relationships that have started um, sure, in, in their booths, right? I mean, it, even when I first started my business, I, I used to call that my my annex because that was where I would I would go and and work out of every once in a while. And you sit there and you're going to know eight people that walk in in your time. Absolutely, yeah. When the Notice Network was looking for an opportunity during this time that we're in to support local and connect the community. And the whistle stop was my first top of mind because I'm like, man, they don't even know the impact that they've had on my life. And my meeting with Jamie and all the other, like you said, Nick, it's like an annex. I mean, it, it just was my office before I had an office. And I'm so grateful that it's here in the community. So I want to support them for sure. Well, Jamie, let's move over to you a little bit and let's talk about, about Enjoy and, and what that is. You are an artist and amazing artist there's some i'm assuming that's uh -huh. your work behind you uh, yes. and and i really really i'm gonna plug it i really love the star wars series we need more Thank ewoks you. in our lives um you know some people that's say that. more cowbell i say more ewoks <laughs> um well tell us a little bit about about enjoy and what that is and then and then how that connection was made to to what amy's doing yeah, thank you. Well, uh, thanks for loving my Star Wars and my quirky side, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm not a formally trained artist, but I've always loved art. I joke with my kids who um, now advanced classes are so prominent. I'm like, the only advanced class I took in high school was art. So I, I do have that in my heart and in my background, but nothing formal there. Um, actually, I have a degree in communications and I have a minor in photography. So that communication experience is coming in handy now with my, my speaking and the trainings and stuff. But I created Enjoy because I love joy, number one. And two, I think it's important to help people find their own joy within themselves and, to, and then spread that. So I use art and creativity, like more of a creative process to kind of help people get there. I just think, especially right now, art and creativity can help us give our minds time to clear and open up to more potential. So I, I just, I love, I love creativity and I, I think it's uh, limitless and I just think it's so fun and, and it doesn't have to be perfect. There's no rules with it. It's just such a cool exercise and practice. So that's I, the hardest thing for me to get is when you say it doesn't have to be perfect. 
I know we talked about that last time and Amy and I have a, we have something coming up about perfectionism and I've been actually doing a lot of research about creativity and perfectionism and how they can contrast. And so right now you're seeing in this world that we're in so much creativity. We just, we have to be creative. And so if you're just trying to be a perfectionist, I think perfectionism, if you're a brain surgeon, that's going to be great. If you're trying to get to the moon, you're going to need the perfectionism is not necessarily a negative thing if you're using it as a way to be excellent. But if it's holding you back and you're not feeling worthy, then yeah, you can't be creative and just open and just, yeah. So it's just the, the goal is with creativity is to kind of help build people up, right. And to get to know themselves doing those practices and those exercises. So when I'm doing enjoy, I'm either doing a private art lesson, working with kids um, or a workshop for mostly my pocket is children. Um, and then I have a product, I have a journal that I've published and it's great for all ages. So it's all, it all revolves around positivity, encouragement, inspiration, confidence, resilience. So when I was doing these workshops, Amy and I's mutual friend, it's just, there's so much synergy between what we were doing. And so the philosophy behind enjoy is really that like positive self-talk and what you're saying after I am is true for you. So my lessons were very prominent around the two words I am. And so when Amy and I were talking and brainstorming, we thought, okay, what could we do together? So I had the I am, and then she had noticing. So that's how we came up with I am noticed. Well, let's talk about what that is. Yeah. As, a, as an actual tool and a, and a program, you, you work with schools and, and school districts and you actually will go into a school. You have, I think there's even a, a thing that can be an I am noticed school. Yes. So, so what is that program? What are, you, what are you trying to do? Is this just for students? Is it for, is it for staff? Well, how does this work? Well, I am noticed is definitely we serve students, staff, and families mostly school districts are our pocket. We have worked with some um, nonprofits and some camps as well, Camp Encourage, Camp Quality, and we love that. Uh, basically, any nonprofit organization that serves youth, we can support them with our tools and our resources. So we have a whole roster of resources that we offer. We do professional development. We work with peer models. So we do workshops and trainings. We do all school assemblies. We have family events. So we feel like, our, well, our mission is to create more sustainability in a, in a culture. Positives. Oh, gosh. Amy, I just messed that up. <laughs> hey, well, well, let's, let's talk. Let's start with just the, the, the training part of it. What, what is that? I mean, what is, what is the goal? What are you trying to train, whether it's students, whether it's staff? What are you trying to achieve with that? You go in. We say foundationally, we focus on relationship building and communication. Then we practice tools that help us to increase our positive attitude, our positive self-awareness, our ability to see the good in others, to receive it when people notice the goodness in us, which is always a big one actually. And then to, to know that we matter, that we are making ripples, whether they're good or bad. And so to take personal responsibility. So we practice all those things. It's kind of, we call that the I am notice cycle. It's kind of at the heart of every workshop because that's where we can actually um, embed some habits in our lives that can help us to be more positive and to be able to engage that way. And our outcome is confidence and resilience. So you say, what are we, what's the, what's the end game or what's the goal? with a workshop or with anything that we do, it's to create more confident and resilient humans. So how do you put that in terms for say a fourth grader to understand? That's actually really, really easy. Fourth grade's an amazing time. <laughs> um, we, we joke that we teach the same thing K through superintendent. So the only people that have an issue Superintendents that, are probably the hardest, I, but let's nope. just put that out there. Actually, I was going to say that. I was not going to say that. I was going to say middle schoolers. Middle schoolers kind of want a more elaborate curriculum. So if you've ever had a middle school in your life, you might know what I mean by that. Just um, they want to make sure that this is, you know, not beneath them. But in all reality, it's so simple, but so deep. We just recently had a superintendent say to us, 
it's just so simple, but so deep. Like it was just reflective and just like, wow. Um, so when, when we, you ask how we do a, how we would approach a fourth grader, fourth graders are amazing because they get it. They have enough life experience and school experience and social experience to be able to internalize what we're talking about, but they're not resistant to change. And um, just kind of starting to, we always, we, we say about fourth grade, you start to kind of look to your friends to see how you should answer. And so maybe the first part of fourth grade is like an ideal time. You're not, you're not worried so much about what everybody thinks about you. Um, and so well, why I said the superintendent was probably the harder one. We, we, you, you talk about resistant to change and, right? and resistant to, to somebody else's idea of process. Right. So, yeah. and, and I'm not trying to be mean to the superintendent, but this is a, you know, that's, that's the person that's in charge that has all of these processes already set in stone. And this is how we accomplish our goals. I, I think what, um, and Jame, I'd love to hear what you would say on that too. My thought on that, Nick, is that part, in part, the superintendent role or a leadership role, even in corporate, you have so much that you're aware of. And those systems and those processes serve so many people. And your, your awareness of if they change the domino effect that, right. that goes into place. And so there is a healthy respect, I think, on the side of Jamie and I to make sure that we're not going into a district or a school and saying, hey, you need to change these things, but rather asking really good questions. What, what's working good here? What, what's hard? What do you want to see? And, and letting there be a healthy respect at every level, but certainly at that leadership level for what they know is working and where they know there's room for improvement. So would you say that you are less about offering a process and more about how to amend or adjust current processes? I think, I think what Amy and I are so proud of is that we've created this practice and we have this philosophy and it's truly how Amy and I live. It's a way of being. And so when we're doing our workshops and, and trainings, it's, we're really just inviting people to let us in to their heart because it really is an interpersonal connection even if it's us to many people or if it's a small group that's that's always our tone so that's when amy says we're serving really kindergartners through adults like it's that's our philosophy is that it's just an invitation whether you choose to engage and implement it into your life that's up to you and we're not saying we're better than or you know so we go through this creative journey with our audience and it's it is interactive it's it's different. We do, we do some art. And if we, we can't do art, we make sure we do something creative to help without sustainability. And then we have online content and curriculum for our clients who really do want to take a deeper dive because we, we are speakers and we love motivating and inspiring, but it really is about engagement. And we feel like to make a huge culture shift in a, in a positive way, it does take all those people so I hope that answers your question. I hear you. It's, it's like there are systems and there are some techniques and tools and ways, but it's not like do this. It's just like, here are some suggestions. Here's some practices. Well, I think, I, I think what, I, what I was kind of pointing to there was there are a lot of, 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 of consultants and look, we're, we're all offering consultancy in some way, right? All right. of our businesses. Um, but there are a lot where we say, hey, this is, this is, this is my proven system. Here is my process here is my system i'm selling you go do this but it sounds like that's not really what you're trying to push that it's it's more the idea behind the process or the goal of the process is, is the bigger deal for you guys is, is am, am i reading that right you're totally reading it right and i yeah. think that's there's some there's some credibility we have to kind of walk that line carefully um there's there's some credibility that we have established with qualitative data that we are just now starting to get the partnerships in place to create some quantitative data and say this is working. Um, we, we know it's working based on that qualitative response and the stories we hear and the schools that have embraced it, how that's working for them. But it's, we're not, we have not really started this. Our heart was not to prove that we were right. Our heart was to help people to one, celebrate what's already really good 
a big theme that we hear from our, our friends who are educators is that they they just can't put one more thing on their plate and their their capacity um, has had to shift to wellness every bit as much or more than academic education and so how do we help create some sustainable tools that help them without giving them one more thing to do and then i would say the same is true for a student or a family member how do we help them sustain their positive approach to learning and to living without giving them one more thing to do when everybody's kind of feeling taxed sure. and um, so when jamie says an invitation there's information and there's inspiration but that invitation is really vital that it be packaged in a way that is not just our opinion of what would work for that for people but rather um, tapping into what works for you how can you see this benefiting your life because yeah, their engagement's more likely. Oh, for sure. I was just going to say another thing is too, because we are so passionate about being proactive for us as consultants, we're not necessarily coming in trying to fix. We're trying to just help make it more of a positive place. So then that strategy is in place. So then when there are hardships and there are like things like happening, like a pandemic, we've built confident and resilient people within the culture. So then they can actually handle and navigate and get creative and curious and open and be kind and all those things so we're gonna put a stick a pin in the in the the now oh. part the the pandemic oh. and what's going on now we're gonna stick a pin oh. in that we're gonna come back gonna to put it. A pin in it but first i want to i want to you both have used the word the term cultural shift you both have just have said that in 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 our previous conversation what is that cultural shift? What are you talking about? What What are you looking? What change in the way we as a people talk and interact with each other? What are you What are you trying to get to? We ask kids all the time, "What is confidence?" And without any help or assistance from us, they come up with a general the general terms of what what it means to be confident. It's the same school to school. Um, and every school is not the same, you know, I mean, the people in every school are not the same, but everybody kind of understands at first they'll be like, um, what is confident? Um, I don't know. And actually a lot of times kids will lean toward what is arrogance. They'll describe arrogance when they're describing confidence, but the more they unpack it, the more words like being helpful, being kind, listening, um, um, being willing to, yourself. Yes, it's a big one. Yes. Um, standing up for what you believe in, even if others don't agree. Um, and so they can kind of formulate what this looks like. So when you say, what is the cultural shift? Can you imagine a world where we as people just functioned with those characteristics of confidence? Where when things were easy, we were confident. When things were hard, they were confident. We were confident and so we actually have kids do a role play um, and we have adults do a role play um, with people as part of our workshop where they act out the position of being self-destructive so basically i'm not enough and i my world's horrible and i could choose positive thought but i'm not i'm choosing really negative thought and i'm really hard on myself or arrogance on the other end of the spectrum I could choose kind thoughts, but I'm going to instead choose thoughts that say I'm better than you and I'm going to put you down so that I feel better about myself. And then confidence. I am enough. And I think you're enough too. And then we have a stimuli. And so maybe the stimuli is um, somebody in the role play is just giving a compliment. Hey, I like your shirt. And you can imagine the self destructive person like, oh, I don't know. I mean, no, I look terrible. I always look stupid. My mom made me wear this. You know, I mean, all that. The arrogant person saying like, oh, it's better than your shirt. And there's a fight that's getting ready to ensue, or at least everyone's feelings are hurt and they're gonna not connect. And that confident person saying, thanks, I like your shirt too. And that, that sounds so simplistic, but you can take it and extrapolate it out to some of the challenges that we have as people connecting. And if we can approach conversations with each other, if we can approach learning opportunities with each other from a confident place, it changes the culture. It, it is that cultural shift. 
I think um, that, um, that, that kicks back to what you said earlier about the fourth grader is fourth grade is kind of when we start to look yeah. to the people around us and, and is our response going to be what they think I should do. And I think that's the, the trigger for whether, whether it's arrogance, whether it's, whether it's being self-critical. I mean, all those things stem from our worry of, of is my response going to be acceptable to my peers? Absolutely. Right? And that's, that's why it's I am noticed and not just you are noticed. It, it's got to start internally and then ripple out because if we just ask everybody to tell each other that they're great, it's not going to feel authentic if it's not coming from an authentic place. Well, let me ask you this question, Amy. Has what you're doing with Jamie, the I am noticed, has that changed your approach to Notice Network where you're encouraging people to notice others? You just talked about the power of saying I am. Yeah, it, it, it didn't, but it, um, I have always said it's, it's just kind of a, um, it's a tiny part of my mission, helping people notice the goodness in themselves and others. So the I am part kind of highlights that in ourselves and others. But from, from the beginning, um, when I would share with audiences about noticing, um, I've encouraged people to use a one minute mirror challenge and really be able to notice the goodness in themselves and get comfortable with that so that they can authentically give it away. And it, I would say it hasn't changed it, but it has reinforced it completely to watch people of all ages um, grow their confidence from being able to be self-aware and self-accepting. Hi, I'm Jane Monroe, owner of Embrace the Grape and District 4 resident. Donnie Funk has my vote for city council, and here's why. Donnie's time serving on the planning commission, his experience in the construction industry, and his work as a small business owner has given him the insight we need on city council. This means that Donnie knows the questions to ask to get accountability for our tax dollars. Donnie Funk is a strong advocate for public safety and will work to ensure police and firefighters, along with all city employees, are well cared for. Join me in voting Funk for Four. Let's move forward to a little bit uh, to now. You, you said earlier that, that there has been a shift to, to wellness in the education world, whether you're a teacher, whether you're an administrator, whatever your role, that, that there is a shift to, to more emphasis on, on wellness especially now, right? I think that's what we're, we're talking about. I just had um, on the town hall podcast, just had some people from the Lee Summit School District on and, and they said, you know, the, the e-learning there, while their focus is to obviously still provide some learning, their focus is really about maintaining connections between teachers and students and the schools and, and, and the families and that, that idea of wellness. What, how, how are you guys seeing that role that, that you can come in and help support that shift and that, that inclusion of, of, of more emphasis on wellness? We are trying. Um, <laughs> well, I think it's, I, we have talked a lot about this. If we have, I, I'm proud of how we have built strong relationships with our schools. So we had that pre pandemic and we have that now. So we are, um, there's just been so many changes for the schools. They are in production mode, like figuring the, the logistics out. So we are giving them space. We have some resources available on our website. We have some worksheets that we're just giving people. We've uh, created a YouTube channel that has real life positivity conversation between Amy and I. So we're just really leaning into the topics that we're hearing about. And so we have some resources available. We are, again, it's our modality to be proactive. So we're, we're already trying to talk to schools about what are some like ways we can support um, those school communities virtually for social and emotional and leaning into that mental wellness and practicing our cycle. And so we, we are having those conversations. We're doing that and just been emailing and having Zoom calls with our, with our friends, our clients. And it's just been, we've been busy. I think there's, there's so much um, unknown about how all of this is unfolding and uh, uh, so much privilege and responsibility in it to stay connected with students and families. And so in, in, in that, 
I think Jamie and I have always kind of had this healthy balance of we're your friend and we're here for you. And yet we have these resources and we're consultants. So we're, we are, we're kind of unique in that we're still fairly close to our own home base, um, especially in the Lee Summit School District. It's, it's our home as well. And so um, we, I love that you say friends because that's how that feels. Absolutely. It, it then is a little bit weird. Like if I'm doing a corporate consulting on behalf of the Notice Network, it, I'm going to connect with those people, but it's not, I'm not in my backyard necessarily. And, and when it's your friends and you're talking to them and they say very honestly with a little shake in their voice, I need 580 hugs. That's what I need. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can't fix that. So, you know, it's, it's been this um, kind of emotional, <sighs> I mean, yes, we're small business owners and yes, we're feeling the pressure of all of the reality of the pandemic, but it's our friends out there who are yeah. trying so hard to support every single student and family member, but from afar. And so there's not a lot of like definitive, this is what we're going to do, but we are really listening and hearing people a couple weeks ago, it was like, we can't give our teachers one more thing. So if you could just like create a place where they could feel like they could sit in a room with you and talk, that's what we would love. And that's really how our YouTube. Yeah, that's what we did. Started. We're like, okay, well, we'll just sit in a room and talk and uh, two separate rooms. Um, and, and maybe people can jump in and be part of those conversations. And so that's kind of where the need is today. And I think that'll evolve probably rapidly as we start to see what this is looking like. You said this is on YouTube. So is that, is that a, a, a YouTube live thing where they can, people can join in the conversation? So we haven't gotten technologically intelligent enough to do it live yet, but um, we, I know yeah. a producer you can hire. Oh, that's really good to know. We should talk about that. We, um, yeah, because I do think we so. all pimp ourselves in this. Well, I'm, I'm, um, we were trying to get it under our belt. Like, what would it look like for us to sit and, and just talk for 20 minutes about little parts and pieces of what we practice in our own lives daily? And, and we were just trying to get comfortable with it. But I, I can see that as the next frontier, Nick. That could be cool. That'd be awesome. Well, how, you know, it, if we go back to the very beginning of this, you, you talked about, really this was about conversations. This was about starting conversations with people, whether it's with themselves, whether it's with their peers, or between an administrator and a teacher or teachers and students, all, all of those different combinations. Do you feel like, do you feel like that's still, even, even as we have to change processes based on the now, because now is weird and now is hard. Is it still that same focus, though, uh, of initiating and helping conversations happen that, that get us to that place of, of confidence? I'm going to use that word. I definitely think conversations are a part of it, and, and the communication tools that we teach are a part of it. So encouraging people to have positive conversation seems huge. Seems like a really, really, really important part. We, we say foundationally, though, it's intra and interpersonal conversation. And so sometimes it's hard to have interpersonal conversations if we're not ready yet. So one of our segments that we've done on our YouTube channel is about self-care. And that seems counterintuitive to, your, to the answer. Yes, I think conversations are important, but it's not. It, I bring myself to every conversation that I have. And so in what state am I? Um, and I want to I want to make sure that I'm as healthy as I can be so that I can communicate with the people that I either live with or I'm trying to connect with via work, um, even even if it's remotely. It's actually even more important remotely because there's so much room for interpretation. If I just have a bunch of conversations with my kids over text, they're going to assume my tone. And unfortunately, they have their own like language. So if I do K, the letter K for OK. I have just said K okay, instead of okay. So I have to- Interpretive have to, context. <laughs> yes, yeah, there is a whole contextual problem. So yeah, I think that, I think communication and conversations are vital. And um, I think that before we can jump into that, we kind of have to go to the I am part. And um, or not maybe not before, but just make sure we're doing that as well. 
Yeah, I, I like it's... all this talk about, about communication and, 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 and interpersonal, intrapersonal and all that. It reminds me of, of, of the old professor I had in college who, who taught the, the intro to communication. And it all started with, with the definition of communication. It was communication is an act. And he would <laughs> slam the board when he would say act. Um, and if you ask anybody who went to Missouri Southern between, you know, from the 70s through the 90s, they will all remember Richard Massa and that speech because awesome. it was drilled into our heads. I, I just, I, I'm reminded of that, though, that, that all of the stuff that you're talking about, and even we joked before we started recording, even my weird cynical brain of not buying into your, your goodness talk at first. <laughs> All of this crazy though, it's, it's really, it's all about action, right? It's all about, it's all about intentional conversations, intentional moves to, toward positive kindness, right? Yes. And I, I think about like, who's watching this? And I know you have such a variety of people who tune into your show and I'm imagining. My that- mom and my wife, that's, that's kind of it. Well, both those women already know all this because they've mastered communicating with you, right? So they already get the crowns. Um, yeah, I think that I th- I think though that there are so many people right now inside their own homes trying to navigate new boundaries and new environments with each other. I've seen so many memes and jokes about how dogs are like dude, this is exhausting, <laughs> you know, like having my people home. Um, and so I think, I think there's a reality to one thing that we could use this particular episode to serve right now in so many ways. We've talked a lot about educators trying to reach students, but inside a house, you've got communication happening all the time. And so, you know, just some like really simple things, asking good questions. We start every training we ever do with discovery and ask, how are you doing? And, you know, what, what's good? What's hard? What do you want to do? You know, just what, just asking good questions, just, and then here's this really tricky part. We always tell kids, here's the best part of this leadership training. Listen, like ask the question and then listen. And I know that that seems so simple, and I think that's probably naturally happening in in some homes, but in others, it may be one of those things that it's such an obvious thing that it's overlooked, but that communication can be that simple. And I think sometimes we avoid it because the answer may be overwhelming, like what do you need? I need 580 hugs and I can't get those, right? (laughs) Or whatever that answer is, But, but being okay with that in this time. Um, Man, yeah, I hear you, this is hard. I can't really fix it, but I hear you. I'm here with you. That's proven, I think, to be very beneficial. The you listening know. is a key is a key part there, and I think how you listen <laughs> is important. And and I say that only because there are different types of listening. I sometimes have to tell myself to to do it differently because I am used to this kind the situation we're in now, where I'm listening, but I'm listening to what is my next question going to be? Where do I want to go based on 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 what you just said? And, and that's not the right way to listen when you're when you're trying to engage your family or or, or others. You really need to listen. To, I, to I, I want to I want to honor what you just said though. There's 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 an advantage. There's a I understand why you're listening the way you're listening. I think if you're listening to notice someone, and that's your intention, then your only intention is to hear that person. And that's a different, you're right. There's a difference there. I don't think one's necessarily more important or even better than the other. I just think that the bang for your buck in relationship building comes when you listen to notice and not try to fix or do or, and then there's plenty of time and room for fixing and doing and building, once you're building relationship to say, what should we do next? And I was thinking this, what do you think of that? And there's tons of opportunity for that. But in the, in the very beginning, if you listen to notice and that person feels that you've validated them, all of a sudden you can do lots of things you couldn't do before. That's hard. I mean, as a parent, we're all parents. Yeah. To listen and not try to fix. Just for a little bit though. <laughs> I know, you don't know. I, I, I know. But I mean, what you're saying, it's just, this is one of those things. And, and, and Jamie, I you know. and I work with that, that, that task force through, through Lisa McCares. And that's one of the things that the, we've learned hearing from, from 
teens and stuff is stop trying to fix everything. <laughs> but that's our instinct we have to fight, right? Well, and I think right now it's such a good reminder that we can't fix anything. We just oh, really stop have bringing to be, me down, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it. It's stressful for sure. I think it's just being grateful with yourself and knowing that if you can listen that way, that's awesome. But if, if you don't, that's okay too. It's just, it's a practice just like anything else. The more you do it with intentionality and with a kind heart, you'll get better at it. Well, what are some tips that you guys have? I, I like this that we're talking about during this weird time. Um, that's my nice way of putting it. During this weird time, you know, we're we're with our families, and and I think you know we all go through cycles, right? So when it, when we first started the lockdown, we were all like, "What can we do together? Let's let's get into this and let's have some projects and and do totally. some things." And then we cycle into the uh, "I'm going to go to this room, you're going to go to that room," or even when we're all together, we all have our own devices and we ain't talking because I'm tired of you, <laughs> or I'm just bored, right? And bored is a choice. We can get into that conversation later. But what are some, I guess, what are some, some tips that you guys have based on your experience and based on what you do every day with organizations to engage each other and have these conversations that can really let us know what's, what's happening and what we're thinking and, and also maybe get into some things where we can have some fun and do, do things together, but it's not that, that forced feeling we had in the beginning. Go. Oh, did, I, did I go? Did I do too much there? No, there's there was. I know. I think that's such a great question and good insight. I think the one thing I would say is just being your authentic self. You know I, what we've seen is a lot of people, if they weren't on a regular basis, really loving cooking or doing creative things, or you know, and then they're trying all those things. Those may create stress for you. So I think just being true to yourself and this time I think is very essential. And then within those, like, I guess some of your, your other questions are like, what are some things you can do? But I obviously like the asking good questions and listening and then getting outside of yourself and just being present for the person in front of you. Um, and just seeing them the way they need to be seen. I love Amy's language around noticing. It's I see you, I hear you, and you matter to me. Those things, even just utilizing that language right now with the people that you love, uh, that are either in your nest, like in your home, or outside of your, outside of your nest or in your community, just having some really kind language there, I think is true. And if that's again being authentic to yourself, so that's definitely like Amy and I's language. So if if that's not how you talked before, it's probably not the best time to start a new way of, you know, if sarcasm is your first language, you can do that in your own way, but it can still be endearing. So, um, just, and I, feel like I that don't was know. Me. <laughs> no. But I hear you. Our family, we started out, I've already framed a puzzle that we did. Like we did a puzzle in the beginning and this cool Star Wars puzzle and there's been no puzzle since the beginning puzzle. Like that was go going in strong with the family activity. So we've just, I think how to find, we are finding, I don't love the word balance. I use the word harmony. So it's like harmonious. Like sometimes we're completely doing something together as a family, whether it's a quick game or we're just picking a, a movie that's light or we are giving ourselves our space because I'm doing a lot of work in the evenings because I'm not always able to get a flow in the day. So just being graceful with what that looks like because it's just different. So I think being authentic, being true to you, being graceful, trying new things, but yet don't stretch yourself too much where it feels stressful. That's a lot of words. What do you that think? That's awesome. I'm gonna, I want to wrap this up and I'm going to wrap it up with a very unfair question. Oh, What? This is totally not fair. And basically because of the unknown, what's next for you guys? Oh. Where, do, where does I am notice go next? Can you, can you even answer that question right now? Yes, yeah. we can. Yeah, we can. Well, then do it. <laughs> More goodness. We're just going to keep, right. we're just going to keep doing us. We are, what's cool about Amy and I is from this very first conversation we had, we are 
very open. Amy's wonderful at strategizing. I'm incredibly optimistic. She's optimistic too, but we can use our strengths during this time to come together. We are, we've made a pact to each other to stay connected during this time, to have check-ins, to make sure that's what makes us thrive is making sure we're good. And then how can we serve? So we'll continue to get creative and innovative and in what that looks like. And we're here for our community, our schools, our kids, our teachers, our families. We're ready. I love think that. Amy's totally true. I would have said it the same way. So good. Yeah, I don't, I don't exactly, I mean, it's not like we have um, an exact idea, but I think one thing that comes with confidence is a knowing instead of a doubt. And it's in that knowing that I know we will continue to serve and we'll meet people where they're at and, and be able to really lean in and listen to see how we can use these things. Um, we always are saying it's people over process. How we, how we interact with people is more important to us than if everything goes the way we think it's going to go for production. And so um, we'll continue to live that way and, and serve that way for sure. I love the people over process mm -hmm. and, I, I, and there's, there's a reason I love it. The, the Wednesday episodes of, of this podcast where I have my, my co-host Jason Nor Norbury on, we get very nerdy about process and we love it. I love government processy stuff that's fun for, for, for me, but I think we always have to remind ourselves that no matter what that is, it, it, everything, everything always comes down to people and relationships. So I, I like that you said that. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's definitely a hybrid. I mean, it's not that we're like throwing process out the window. Right. We are, we're really, we, we understand and know that it flows better if we have certain processes in place. And we always know when we're going into a school or an organization that their processes need to be honored because those are very carefully thought out and very intentional. So it's not that we're like, you know, woo, whatever, just people, but but, no, when but it I think comes the foundation it, is always people. Yeah. And the goal is always it, about those people. Yes. When it comes down to it, we're always like, you know, I mean, if we get to a presentation, a workshop, regardless who it's for, and the technology is not working or the people aren't there at the right time or whatever, we're going to be kind to people. We're going to communicate authentically this message and however we do it it'll be okay. It'll be good. And so I think that's what the future looks like. I think we will continue to work with people and support people and how we do it might evolve, but it's going to come down to creating sustainable, positive culture because that's our mission. That's what we do. That is fantastic. Well, if people want to follow the two of you, they want to join in some conversations. Let's give us some contact information for, for I am noticed and for Jamie and Amy. Awesome. So I am noticed.org is our website and our social links are on there. So you can find those. We're on Twitter and Facebook. Um, and, and YouTube. And YouTube. Yeah, and YouTube. Yes. And Jamie specifically mentioned our resources. There's a resource tab on our page that has all those free resources right now. So that's awesome. Fantastic. Well, all right. One last question. This started, we were only doing this with uh, candidates for elected office but I've decided that we need to have fun and everybody needs to answer this question. And it is also the question where I will judge you greatly. Your, answer, your answer matters. And this is really all about proving that I am right. Hey, and Parker. another set of local business owners are wrong. So Amy and Jamie, if I were to set in front of you two plates, Ooh. one plate holds burgers, one plate holds tacos, which one are you choosing? Oh, I know what there you're is a right answer. Burger. That's the Taco. wrong. Answer. There we. Amy is correct what? and Jamie is wrong. It's true. It. I'm sorry, Jamie. I, I really don't like thinking ill of you, but I like tacos, but I love I love cheeseburgers. Tacos overall. <laughs> I totally completely celebrate that you love burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Amy and Jamie, up. thank you very much for, for, for joining me again. I appreciate it. I appreciate what you guys do and your perspectives on, on everything. It's, it's, it really is awesome. And you guys are friends and I love it. Thank you very much. Hey, thank real quick. Yes. Nick Parker. Yes. Thank you. Ah, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>
you're really doing a lot for our community right now and we just appreciate you and love your sweet spirit and even though you just set me up right there <laughs> i still just adore you i think you're a pretty exceptional human and i just wanted to thank you too thank you much appreciated you guys are awesome and we will talk to everyone next time bye thanks guys that was fun